Yo, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Fried Chicken Fishing. Today, we're out here gar fishing. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna catch these, how we're gonna clean them up, and how we're gonna cook them, because these things are delicious. They've been on this planet for like 75 million years. Complete Long-nosed gar has been present in North America for 100 million years, at least. I'm in the mood for some dinosaur meat. Let's go catch us a dinosaur. Best time to fish for these gar, nice hot summer days. Get out there when it's nice and hot right in the middle of the day. That's when the water will have the least amount of oxygen in it and the gar will have to come to the surface to gulp some air. Fun fact, I mean, the gar's been in North America for like 200 million years, so they figured out how to survive. Best bait for gar? fresh cut or live bait. I found that gar really, really like green sunfish or bluegill, something that really, really thrashes around on the hook. All right, the best places to find your bait, your bluegill, your green sunfish, is on the edges of these slower moving pools if you're fishing in a river system like this. They're gonna be right on the edges. They're gonna be somewhere where the water's a little bit slower, just like that, wasn't even paying attention. And there you go, we got our bait. Super easy, easy, easy. Got ourselves a little green sunfish. That's all we need. We're gonna hook him up live on our hook. I got a cork. I'm going down to, I believe, a number four bait holder hook. And then I'm trailing with a tiny little treble hook. Now I know this looks really, really weird using such small hooks for what can be a very large fish. But trust me, these gars mouths, you're really just trying to snag the thing more than anything. You're gonna have to let them take it forever. And that treble trailing hook is really what's hopefully just gonna wrap around that gar's sharp teeth and get them. So all I did was put the bait holder hook right up through the top of the green sunfish like that. Hopefully that'll attract a big old dirty gar. Let's go. All right, this is an absolute beautiful spot right here. These gar will sit down here on the edges of this current seam here and they'll just wait and they'll ambush little, little sunfish, anything else that comes down here. So we're gonna just toss that sucker right into the current here and we're gonna let him do his thing. It shouldn't be long. Now for gar fishing like this, we wanna leave the bale open. All right, we're definitely leaving the bale open because we wanna let this gar make one or maybe two runs to go and eat this thing. Oh. Just like that, just like that. That bobber's gone. It's way down there, you can't really see it. We're leaving this bale open, now look at this. That gar is gonna make its first run. And you don't wanna set the hook quite yet. You wanna let it take all that it wants. Now remember, one important aspect to remember about gar fishing is we might get lucky and we might get this, for, this one on the first try, but it normally doesn't work out like that. My experience has been like 50%, sometimes even like 30% hookups on these gar. Look how quick that was though. Barely had time to set up. There's gar everywhere hunting out here. Oh, that bobber just popped up down right there. Now I don't know if that means that it's dropped the bait or that if it's still munching it back. I have a feeling we lost the fish. Yeah, we lost the fish. Now surprisingly, that fish actually doesn't have any bite marks. Maybe a couple very, very faint ones there at the top. I am gonna just go ahead and reposition that bait holder hook because it did pull on it a little bit. There we go, just like that. All right, let's send this back out. And we're gonna leave that bale open just like that. So when that gar takes it, it's got full rain. Great, great fish. Um, and, you know, like I've said, it's like four or 500 million years old, something like that. Something's breaking the surface right up next to the bobber there. Come on, on the takedown. There it is, and it's gone. And it's gone. 
So you really, really want to let that gar take as much of that as it wants. Watch that flying. See it go. You want to let it take all of that. It's very difficult to be patient when gar fishing and allow this. It's thrashing at the surface over there on the other side of the bank. Still taking line. Make sure you got a lot of spooled up line. I'm actually running close to the end of my bale here, so hopefully this thing doesn't take all the way off down the river. The gar is still swimming away and I'm running out of line. I'm actually gonna have to attempt to set this a lot sooner than I'd like to. There we go. All right, I think we're hooked up with him. The problem is, is he gonna be hooked around something? He really traveled quite the distance here. Oh, he's hooked on a log down there. All right, let's see if he can unhook himself. Swim out of there. Oh my goodness, all right. He's taking line again. There we go, we got him off. We got him off. Nope. We got him off. Let's see what we got here. Look at that beautiful little long nose gar. Oh my goodness, I did not think we were gonna get him off. How cool was that? I did not think we were gonna get him off. Let's get this down here. Look at that fish. That right there is a beauty. Now, see this? See how he's hooked right there? That's the best you can hope for. All right. Because look at these teeth, the monster teeth on this thing. Absolutely beautiful. Been on the earth for like two billion years. So we're going to let him go. We're going to see if we can catch ourselves a bigger one, slightly bigger. You know, I mean, this is still a great fish. And these two back straps right down the middle, if we were planning on catching a whole bunch of these, would be delicious. But we'll let him get back in the river and get bigger. I'm gonna go rebate real quick. <laughs> yes! All right, let's get it back out there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Let it go. You gotta take it. Oh, it just popped back up. Oops, failure. Oh geez, y'all all right? Sorry about the traumatic experience. Look at the damage to that guy. He got torn up right there. That was a nice gar. Let's get him back out. Fishing for gar is really similar to like fishing for pike. Um, the only difference is I don't see you people using a lot of lures. I have used those braided ropes before, um, frayed braided ropes. The problem is, is you really, really have to be able to sight fish them. You have to be able to cast that right next to them. And where I fish for gar on this little river, it really doesn't work like that. I have to just kind of cast where I expect gar to be-ish. Um, without you know sitting there and jigging all day so i really like this method but a lot of different methods work i'll probably try the other method on the channel um but again i really need to be able to you really need to be able to like see the fish to be able to go with the rope oh there we go we got another takedown so that last one we caught was really small so i'm thinking the smaller ones might need to um get away from the pack a little more to be able to enjoy their meal if that makes any sense so uh maybe if we can hook a bigger one here it won't have to travel as far. Oh man, every single time your adrenaline gets pumping. But ready, remember, right now we're sitting at, I think, 50%, right? 
Or are we 25% because we've had four breakdowns? Takedowns, breakdowns, whatever. What is it? I don't know. The guard's been on this earth for like 17 billion years. So, oh, there we go. We're making a big run now. Look at that go. Look at that run. Just let it take it. What we're not going to let it do, hopefully, is get wrapped around that log again, though. So what we may have to do is set the hook a little bit earlier than we'd otherwise like to. Remember, the gar's been on this earth for 32 billion years, so you're fighting a dinosaur here. So I'm going to go for it here. We're at 50%. There we go. I think we got it hooked. Yes, we do. It feels a little better. The problem is, are we going to be able to get this? There we go. It's going back out into deeper water. I was worried for a second. Look at that. Oh, this is a nicer one. This is a nicer one right here. There we go. There's our eater right there. That's our eater. All right. Now, do gar get bigger than this? Heck yes, they do. Will this gar be delicious? Also, yes. Oh, man. Hold on. All right, guys, I want to show you why we're using the hook setup that we're using here. Uh, it's nice to carry a pair of gloves with you if you're uh, searching for gar, because then you can kind of just pick them up right by the nose. Um, definitely don't pick them up this way if you don't have gloves on. But there's our gar. And look at that, that little tiny hook, that little tiny hook right there hooked right up through the top. And actually, before he started thrashing around, this treble hook was hooked back here. I'm gonna knock this guy out. I'm gonna throw him in the back of the truck. When we get back to the house, we're gonna clean him up. Ready? It's 110 and I don't give a <laughs> Got a gar in the truck and I'm off to the rodeo. Welcome back to the house. All right, cleaning gar right here. We got our gar back at the house, dispatched. He's super dead. So what we're gonna do is clean him up. Now, like I mentioned down at the river, there's two back straps here. That's all you're really gonna eat. It's like two tenderloins almost all the way down the bottom. Now, I don't know if you can hear this. It's like, here, I'll put it next to the microphone. Hear that? It's like armor. This stuff is crazy, crazy, crazy strong. Um, and it actually really makes Knight's leather too. I've done that before. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a couple episodes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come behind the gills and you gotta go at a severe angle here. Let me get this out of the way. Severe angle. And we're gonna come right up to the top of the backbone, just like that. And we're gonna repeat on the opposite side. All right, and you're probably sitting here wondering, Marcus, why do you have garden shears with you? Well, garden shears or tin snips is the way that you're gonna get this meat out of here. So you're gonna make a cut right there, right at the backbone, all right? And just like this, you're gonna cut all the way down the back. Now, if you're trying to preserve this skin for some kind of uh, a leather project that you have in mind, you can do this from the bottom. However, the thing about gar and how some people call them poisonous, their organs and intestines and possibly if they're pregnant, their eggs are, from what I've heard, they are toxic to humans, so you can't eat those. However, if you cut it from the back like this, I'll show you when I open it up, you're never gonna even come into contact with that stuff. So, go all the way down the back, just like that. Now I should with these, see how easy it is with those shears to just cut that back fin off? And go right down, all the way to the tail. All right, so hopefully you can see this. What I'm doing is I'm getting the knife inside there and I'm running it all the way down the skin. Just letting it bounce along the skin. 
My gosh, these chickens are super loud. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Stop. Just like that. See that? You cleaned all that skin out. You can open that right up. Now you repeat on the other side. You get your thumb in there. Just kind of press like this. Open that up. And then once you got it open, then you can start bouncing along with your knife. All right, see that? That's a dinosaur right there. 750 billion years old, older than the age of the known universe. All right, at this point, it'll be really important for you to have your bowl of ice water available because you want to get these fillets down and cold as quickly as possible. All right, so super simple. Now that you've got this completely opened up, looking beautiful, just take your knife, your filleting knife, <laughs> take your fillet knife and find that backbone. Now, just like a catfish or, uh, you know, any other fish, it'll have that center, center backbone. Just find that and bounce your knife all the way down the side of it, just like this. Beautiful. What you're gonna find is you're gonna hit a rib cage down there and that's what's gonna separate you from all that stuff that's apparently technically toxic to humans. So as long as you don't pierce that rib cage, you got nothing to worry about. And once you get past all those ribs, just make your cut straight down and then cut out that tenderloin. And look at that. What you have there is an absolutely delicious, cut out that, that silver skin an absolutely delicious white meat filet for gar. Tender, super good. And then you're just gonna take that, stick that right in your bowl of ice water. Let's get the other filet out real quick. I only had about two hours, so we kinda had to take what we can get, but I was hungry for some gar. Um, I really don't fish for gar in the winter time. Not because I don't want to, but because you can't really catch them. They're, they're, it's weird, I don't know where they go in the winter, I'm sure they're still there, I'm sure they're still eating, but here in North Carolina, it is really difficult to fish them um, until they get active in the summer like it is now. The water temperature is about 75, it's gotta be pushing almost 80 degrees, and these gar have gotten real active. They're starting to break the surface. It's easy to sight fish them, start seeing them pop in the surface. Let's get that last little piece cut there. Come back here, cut that little piece off the top there and there you have it you got your two gar fillets and that's quite, for such a small fish for such a small gar that's actually quite a bit of meat take this and you could finish filleting all the skin off of this and you could make yourself some leather because that stuff is great take yourself a little salt or borax let that dry out and that's some beautiful, beautiful leather. I already have dinner planned for this evening, so I'm gonna soak that gar in milk overnight, and we're gonna cook it for lunch tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> oh, who's gonna get it? Dinosaurs eating dinosaurs right there. That's what that is. Because we all know that's, those are my chickenosauruses. Those are ancient, ancient ancestors of the T-Rex right there battling it out for dominance. These are our geese. We got duckleberry fin, um, Ebenezer goose. Uh, the big gray one right there is Ryan Gosling and we have Lucy Goosey as well right there. Those are new additions to our family. As this gar heads down to the garden. Now I've had some problems with buzzards. So make sure if you are composting your fish you're burying them we got our fish under there now 
right on top of it. Pack it down good. Oh, San Marzano is looking great. Our feet are ready to go. Looking a little wilty during the day because it's like 95 degrees outside right now. Here's our onions, our garlic we already pulled. We just pulled our potatoes. Oh, garden's looking great. We got our grapes over there. Really good stuff. All right, so I've got some milk, whole milk, come on. I've got our one gallon Ziploc bag. I'm gonna just put our fillets right into the bag. We're just gonna fill it up until we cover up those fillets with milk. We're gonna stick this in the fridge overnight and I'll see you tomorrow lunchtime. What's up everybody? I'm back from the gym. It's the next day and it is time to cook that gar. All right, get that gar out of the milk. And give it a thorough rinse. Just drop that right in your bowl. Sandwich. We got our homemade buttery bun right here. Mayonnaise, very important. We've got our beautiful, look how white and amazing that is. Oh, just perfect, perfect gar fillets. Put that right down on there. Some romaine lettuce. Some homemade pickled jalapenos I made last night. You can also do some homemade quick pickle. I did this the same as like a homemade quick pickle. Uh, just one part vinegar to one part water, a little sugar, a little salt, and I put some garlic and yellow mustard seed into the jar before I pulled, poured the brine in. And there we go. Oh man, look at that. Pop it all off. That's a dinosaur sandwich right there. Look at that, wow. My mouth is watering. Gotta dive in. All right, let's find out. Can I eat dinosaur? Yes, I can. Oh my. Look at that, unbelievable. You know, if you wanna know what dinosaur tastes like, chicken. A really, really great white, mild meat, especially you soak it overnight in milk. You got a buttery bun, you get some of that Texas peat and that mayonnaise and that beautiful crisp we had on with our flour, a crunch of the romaine, those jalapenos giving it a little bite there. at the end. No bones. No muddy taste, these are straight predators. They're just eating all day. Just eating bluegill. Man, that is so good. Oh, this is my favorite fish. I'm gonna call it. This is my favorite fish to eat. Mm. I love gar. Can you eat a dinosaur? The answer is yes. There's dinosaur all around us 
and you can eat them. Get out there, go catch yourself a dinosaur, put them in some hot oil, cook them up for you and yours. You'll be thanking me. Hey, if you like today's video, go ahead and hit subscribe. It means a whole lot to me. And remember, the world's out here, not inside your phone. Later.